They said they were having problems with the furnace. And of course they told me this after I turned the power off of it. We are on a no heat call here and it's for the lobby area. So they said they were having problems with the furnace. And of course they told me this after I turned the power off of it. I was here to do a filter change and do the PM. So there was probably a code there. Didn't know about it. But because the fans was running, it's kind of hard to pull these filters out of there. And uh, over here on the uh, ductwork. I uh, just turned it back on and of course the draft motor's kicking on. We're gonna see if we got something going on here or if it's something stupid like an igniter or a flame sensor or what, but I thought we had just gone through this thing not too horribly long ago. 31. Can't remember. Is that a pressure switch? Pressure switch. What a surprise. Alright, let's verify that that truly is the issue and see if we got a trap issue or what's going on. Went ahead and just checked across the switch and it is open. So we did verify that. Let's go ahead and check some obvious crap. Let's see if uh, air intake's got an issue. So let's pull this cover off and see if it changes its tune. Okay, I took the cover off and it immediately started. What a surprise. The pipes go up through the ceiling there. Which, it's amazing it left that open. Usually you put this cover on and off. You can, oh wow, that thing's really pulling on that hard. Yeah, we've got a restriction of some sort in there. Could be. does not flex a whole lot. Old uh, three inch pipe don't move a whole lot. Get in there and take a look. So looks like it's clear up to the elbow. I need to go outside. We might be able to blow through this thing. Vacuum it out, hard to say. Now if this was after hours and or snow is on the roof or whatever, you could always pop off the side there of the uh, other side of the box there because you can pull it in from air from either side and that would get them going or you know I wouldn't want to leave the cover off like I'm doing but something's in that pipe and that that stuff that we got there is just remnants of probably what is probably in there so let's go and see if we can see something outside from what I'm seeing here that looks like the old flue pipe for the old furnace and that black thing is either a vent for the plumbing or it's the vent for the furnace. Oh, looky here, there it is. There it is. So, at least it's three inches all the way up and out. I would speculate we should be able to blow anything in there that's in there out of there. Might even be able to run a fish tape through it. And looky there. There's evidence all over the place. Like I always say, you gotta build the case. See that right there? That's the uh, bird's nest. So the birds are living here like a bunch of uh, freeloaders. Let's uh, see if we can get that blown out. I got my little Milwaukee tool. See if it'll work. It's a uh, three inch diameter is pretty big, so it may not do much. We just tried blowing through there, stuck it in there, wrapped her hand around it. Let's see if anything came out. Chances are it probably didn't do anything. But I don't know if that was there or not. Some fluffy stuff. So I don't know if that's it or not. Let's got to go inside and check and see if it works now. I'm gonna run some uh, fish tape through there. I got just about as much as I can get in there. With it being such a big diameter pipe, it tends to want to bend and stuff and not get all the way in there. But I'm hitting against something, so 
I've gotten at least all the way up, I would suspect, into the attic at least. I don't see the end of it up there. Let's go ahead and put it back together and see if the thing runs. I don't want to start chopping pipes apart because I don't have three inch couplings on my truck. We're out of town again, so there's hardly anything up here to get parts. Oh, yeah, freaking covers off. <laughs> make her start over and see how it goes. It's starting back over again. Yeah, it's still feeling out. Uh, we could put the vacuum cleaner on the other side. That's a funny feeling. I can't remember if that plate there was removed last year. See there, it just came on. But you can't trust that because the unit uh, is warm now. Once it's warm, it tends to fire off a lot easier. All right, so the uh, pipe's clear all the way down there on the exhaust to the first elbow, and you can feel we got really good air on that. Now, remember, we took that cap off the other side. They glued this on, which really makes it hard to do much with it unless that paint's just holding I'm gonna smack it a few times thought about even just drilling a hole in there to see if we can look down through I got my bore scope actually you know what good golly I forgot all about it I got a bore scope now that's like way longer than what I ever thought it would need to be that right there will actually make it a lot easier we can look in there and see uh, what's going on so let's get that thing out let's go take a look now I gotta admit this cable is a floppy noodle trying to get that through that three inch pipe. So we've got to straighten it completely out first, which kind of sucks because it takes a lot to do it after it's been wound up this long. And that's why I really don't like having, I think there's 16 foot here, something like that. So we'll go ahead and get that shoved through there. This has got, like I said, a camera on the side, camera on the front, which comes in great. If you want to look inside the engine, look in uh, different, multiple different spots and it's got a, uh, light on that one and light on this side multiple on the front all right you can't hardly see it but we're on the edge of a coupling there i'm looking at the front and the side view at the same time so we're cleaning up to there let's go from the inside out all right so the end unscrews you can put a magnet on it or they got this hook i'm having a hard time getting past these stupid fittings went ahead and drilled a hole in there and put a piece of tape over it because it's an air intake it's not like there's gonna be any water in it we're gonna go up this if we can get through it great if not we're just gonna leave off the cap off the end this place is not going to care whether or not they're pulling a little air out the inside of the building or not there's plenty of combustion air in here you've got holes through the wall you got a chimney going past up into the outside to say the least we're gonna see if this will work we were able to get through if you look there on the bottom screen it says F for front you can see daylight out there you turn the lights off see the daylight flip it to front only view just hold the camera button and there's the forward facing one so there's full size picture we go a little bit further on down along just about got all the way to the end so we know it's visually open we can check the pressure switch with the dual manometer generally i don't have pressure switches go bad that often at least not the carrier anyhow and uh, a little hook thing uh, really comes in handy if you need to hook a wire in the wall or whatever the link is down in the description down below if you want to support the channel okay so we went ahead and hooked up the manometer to it we're tied in on both sides here we got our pressure switch uh, reading on top is what we got on uh, pressure port number one pressure number two is 1.5 and our differential is 1.78 do not believe the carrier was really bad about not putting their pressure switch ratings on their on the switch themselves So it just kicked off and it's acting a little bit rough, but it is doing it. And it's purring clean and clear, which is fine. But it's pretty good. Now, as you can see, once it's got running, it's already started jumping up quite a bit. It's because uh, that warm air is lighter and it's. Uh, cruising through a little bit quicker. 
but that's the most accurate way to do it is to put it on both sides of the pressure switch. I'm sure you guys already knew that. Now that at least I know that the uh, pipe is visually open, I would feel better bringing some air from inside here. Let's go ahead and pull this off. It went up to 0.9. So I made a little bit of a difference. Put this back on again. plate in there but it's burning clean and clear this thing is a 2008 so it's just a matter of time until it's good bad the one i'm using here is the dual port pressure manometer pressure switch tester which is the sdmn6 i'll have a link down below on that pill piece doesn't sponsor me or anything as of yet this has been a really good one this uh has a vacuum pump actually in it so that you can test the pressure switch and then it has continuity checker across here so if you wanted to know if that switch is opening and closing or if you have an adjustable one you can actually set it up with this thing so it does a really good job on that i went ahead and cleaned that up just put some white tape over that it's like i said non uh, there ain't nothing coming through it we're gonna go ahead and clean up the flame sensor check the igniter's resistance clean our condensate trap out we've already changed our filters check fan blades and motor amp draws electrical connections then we got to do the walk-in coolers and stuff like that. So it's going to wrap this one up, guys. The only other new toy I've got here is another Phoenix light, which this one's pretty cool. It uh, is also a head, head deal. I'll see if I can make a link on it. It's kind of cool. It'll tell you if the battery's good. It's got a total of uh, five different settings. The lumens on it is 1300. My other one here is 1000. You can see the size difference. It's just plain stupid. Uh, it's got a magnetic charger on the back, and it's magnetic. And then when you don't need it for that, you can put it in your headset. Boom, like that. We are on a no heat call here, and it's for the lobby area. But you made it pretty easy to find, which is kind of nice. And we just got checking it over here, and I've got a number three code, which I'm not real sure what a number three is. We're going to find out here in a second. It's an ICP comfort maker. Number three, pressure switch did not close or reopen. So that's... Uh, what we got so far. So we see whether or not we got a pressure switch problem or draft motor problem or what. All these filters seem to be pretty dirty. Notice this one here, if you can even get it out. Yeah, they're looking, looking a little shady. So that one don't look so good. This one here is packed nasty as I'll get out. And then these right here, we're in their makeup air unit here, heat recovery. Just pulled those out a second ago and they are just whistling dixie so we're going to wash out those washable layers once we get the uh, system back up and running went ahead and unhooked g let's see if this thing kicks on here just finally came on draft motor's running hard to say looks like a pretty common simple venting system going on here there we go she got the number three all right, let's go ahead and dig in a little deeper here. We got the filters washed out. Luckily, they had a uh, place out there we could wash them out without having to get a hose out. So those are clean. Got her back in there. Yeah, they don't have any filters, so we're going to have to get some. Let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. Generally, what I'll do is clean my condensate trap out first and make sure all my ports here are clear. Seems to be clear. We got this one coming from there to here. I had some water in that one right there when I blew on it. It uh, made the water noise. 
So with that being plugged up, which probably means that that's not draining, um, likely what's going on. I bet you we run it now, it'll probably run. Uh, then now and there goes to the draft motor right there. The uh, one on the other side of the switch. Let's see what it does now. While we're waiting on the other one, let's see if we can get this one turned off. I don't know why I can't find the switch. You'd think they'd have a switch on there somewhere to make it easy, but they don't. I guess that's as good of a switch as we get today. <sighs> I hate these filter racks. These things are garbage. Total garbage. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Wow. That still hasn't came on yet. Let's speed this up a touch. I ain't got all day to wait on this stupid thing. Oh, there it goes, finally. You can usually hear it gurgling in that trap, if there's an issue with the trap. Concrete trap. Look at that, there it goes. This is why I don't usually film residential equipment, even though it's in a commercial application, because it's usually the same stupid crap. Dirty flame sensor, plug condensate trap, igniter bad, blower motor out, draft motor out, bad capacitor. Overfiring, temperature rise ain't right, not enough to return air. It's just, it's just the same stuff over and over. It just does not make for very good videos. Except when you're trying to get a filter out and you gotta freaking spend six minutes trying to get it out without destroying it because you gotta use it. Generally, what I find is the problem the installers don't crimp down these sharp edges. You've got a sharp edge here that'll get caught on the edge of the filter, and you got a sharp edge up on the top. So we're going to squeeze that down, work our way across. I'll either use these or I'll use my um, channel lock slash, you know, whatevers. But that generally will allow you to be able to pull the filter out next time. That way you're not tearing it all apart trying to get it in and out, especially if you just want to check it. We got that out of there. Unfortunately, I had to tear the bottom of it off to get it out. What we'll end up doing is brushing off the filters till he can get the new ones. I hate leaving them out because there's always a good chance they may not get around to it or they forget and then you have nothing in there. Then it starts looking like it already looks in there, which is not good on it either. Let's go ahead and shut down this other one here and uh, get this condensate trap pulled out of there. That's about the only thing that generally keeps it from draining properly. Uh, they kind of didn't make it easy to get to that screw when they put the pipe right through here. It's not the greatest location for it. Looking at this trap, it's got a little bit of crud in it, but not really that bad. So I wonder if we've got some drainage issues inside that collector box possibly. I um, usually like to see this hose kind of drain towards it more, which if you make a trap, like say I did it like that, that'd actually make it worse. So it may uh, shorten that hose up a little bit or possibly pull it back. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, we could shorten that up a little bit and get a little bit better. Sorry, I can't get you a good shot, but we got this stupid thing right in there. It'd been a lot easier if we could have went out through the side and up but then you'd hit all that so it cooled itself down let's go ahead and kill it here let's get that pulled out of there what i find to be the best to get those clamps off is usually some wide linesmen's like that with the crisscross pattern usually grabs right a hold of that no problem now they have a little port that you can see right there and it's on the other side too see it right there That'll be on the back side of this one. You can literally blow through the hose to see, and you gotta be careful, you don't wanna blow the diaphragm out, but you can hear it there. What that's supposed to do is break 
you know, when it's pulling through this way, it's supposed to pull anything that's in that hose out and back into the collector box so it doesn't uh, plug up with crud, which is kind of what it sounds like happened here. But we can shorten that up a little bit. They leave these longer so that uh, be able to move it around to different positions, whether it be upflow, counterflow, whatever it is that it's uh, being used for. But I don't know if that, I mean, it's been in for a little while. It's not like this just happened. Now you can see when you pull it through and lock, lock them back into those pieces right there and there. And there's plenty of leftover here and you can see the hose can dangle down and see how that makes a trap. That's a lot of the issue a lot of times. So let's kind of do it so that it can't trap. So we need to take off about that much right there. I just trimmed that up. Let's push it on there. I don't want to cut it so short that, you know, you can't reach it or if you have to chop off a little piece later. But you can see we're not, we're not pocketing now. It's a nice solid slope coming down to it. I left it fairly tighter that way. You know, you got extra up here and that's that's gonna hold in place there on that uh, bracket that holds that. But that's pretty much all I think's wrong with this one. Now, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and clean the flame sensor out and double check, uh, you know, all the normal stuff that I always check. Every, every heating call, I clean the flame sensor, clean the condensate trap, check the heat exchanger, make sure the flue pipes are properly pitched, you know, make sure the fan blades are clean. If you know if I'm feeling frisky, I might go ahead and check the capacitor on the motor if it's got one. You know, just just common things I do every call because you'll find a lot of stuff by just doing the normal things over and over. As much as I hate doing service checks and things like that, I don't like uh, callbacks, and uh, we don't get paid for our callbacks. Yeah, you can see the nasty green crap on there. Now, contrary to ripoffs beliefs you can clean that you don't have to replace it uh i've always been a big believer in the only way that thing's bad is if it uh, got it so hot that it warped that metal or that porcelain's broke otherwise you're just selling parts so let's uh go ahead and get that cleaned up i've said it a million times i use my wire brush which is stainless steel it's my preferred method and that's what i like to use use your dollar bill rubbing alcohol, whatever else makes you happy, but that's what I use. Here's what it looks like when we're done. I don't usually give me any crap about it, but let's go ahead and look at the grooves, if there is any grooves. You can see the cleaning marks, but there's no deep grooves. It, um, you're gonna have some when it gets that hot, because it's constantly in the path. Lennox always seem to be the best about not uh, getting damaged carriers not too bad but boy there's some other brands out there just bake them and they just tend to overheat I don't know if they're not using stainless steel or what they're using but some of those just tend to really get damaged really easy when they get too hot but there's that let's finish cleaning up our trap here I'm gonna go down and rinse this out in the sink it really don't look that bad I mean it looks like hell but as far as any true gunk there really ain't nothing in there and there's no good way to get this clean it was one problem with them doing it the way they did it that you can see the nasty crap there's no way to really truly get it cleaned out very good I mean you could put a q-tip through there possibly but it ain't really doing anything I truly believe that most of our problem there is with that hose the way it was as much as I hate to do it like that I mean it's about all you can do I brushed them off a couple times and then smack them against the pole right there and the fluffy stuff just goes flying it's good enough to get them by until they get one. Hopefully they'll get it within a few days to no more than a week, but that'd be good until then. We got that all shook out and I'm just looking Jim Dandy. Still looks like crap on the inside, but like I said, anything that was loose has been rinsed out. Let's go back in and get this crap in. We put the side that actually has the piece on it on in there. So that's back up and going. Got that one back in there. Let's go ahead and check this capacitor out, make sure it's okay. It looks like it's rated for 35, which is a hog dog error. See if we can get on that while it's in place. 35, so we're looking good there on that. No issues. 
This thing's only, I think, a couple years old. Looks like 17, 2017. And looks like it was started up 10, 1 of 18. So 19, 20, 21, three years old is all this is. Now do what you want, but whenever I work on these, especially in a counter flow like this, I take them all to their maximum run time. Now this fan runs all the time on this. But what happens is if there's any residual heat in there, it'll come up to here. And on these furnaces, they do not have a limit. But on the Linuxes, they had limits on the blowers. They had, you know, all different limit switches and they would trip. It's a good thing to kind of remember and to do. It can prevent a future callback. But this one here, the only limits they've got on it is the primary there in the center. And uh, some rollouts there and there. So we only got two rollouts. I've had some where they've got two in the front, one on the top, one on the side, one on the side. They're just rolling out. I mean, they must have been singing the song that day when they were putting them in. This is one of those times where that long, extendable head is able to get into those nice, tight spots that aren't ideally placed. You can see we're at an angle there. Works out great because you can then push her right back to the way she was, and she's a normal screwdriver again. All my tools that I use are down in the description uh, underneath my kit. Anything you guys buy helps support the channel. It goes to my Amazon account. You guys still pay the same money, but I get a couple pennies on each one of them. So there you go. There's that, got that back on. Gotta hook this green thing back here on top of the trap itself. There we go. And that goes up there to the top there. We know that's clean and clear. Let's go ahead and start over, which I hooked the G back up, so the fan's gonna run. Let's see if she kicks on. Just revved up, make sure that gas valve's back on. That's why you always cycle this thing, last thing before you leave. That way if you got anything turned off, you're not uh, forgetting. pretty much went through everything you need to check. I mean, the blower capacitor's not uh, bad. We've got the collector box blown out. We found the water in there, which is great because it gave us the right lead of where we're at. We're not just guessing that that's what it was because as soon as we heard that, we knew that that was blocking off the pressure switch. Seldomly do I have a bad pressure switch on the carriers, but it does happen. So we're good on that. Went ahead and got the fresh air tank up there, taken care of and cleaned up. That wasn't part of the deal, but you're here, you might as well just give them a little extra for their money. Same thing with this unit over here. You got the filter cleaned, which I would have preferred to see it replaced, but they don't have any here and we don't carry them on the truck, which it looks like they've been doing because those are not the brand filters we use. That's uh, gonna wrap this one up, guys. I'll go ahead and tag this on possibly with another video. If you enjoyed it, you wanna see more like it, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one.